What's up everyone? You are watching To Your Weekly episode 8. Um, my name is Osiris and I'm here joined by Mr. McCheese. This guy? Hey guys. The baldy, baldness. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know if it was the right choice to cut my hair. It definitely needed some cutting, but taking it you know, down to 6 millimeters, I'm not, I'm not sure if that was the right call. Hmm. Uh, we'll see. It's it's more suited for for summer. If only the goddamn weather would you know show up now. Yeah, if it actually becomes summer at some point, mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be very nice. Uh, it doesn't look like it though, from what I've seen and the weather uh, forecast and all that shit. Well, Seems pretty like, depressing. Yeah, it, it, it's better to have this, yeah, you know, medicore weather when when there's a, an exam period. You're gonna come to uh, Norway. You're gonna be disappointed. No, 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 no. When I'm going to Norway around uh, beginning of July, it'll be sunny. It'll be sunny, it'll be warm, it'll be summer, you know? If not, I will lynch you. (laughs) What can that be my fault? (laughs) Because you're here, you're Danish, you've invaded this country (laughs) before in the not-so-distant past, so, you know... We just bring bad, uh, yeah... Anyway... Everything bad in Norway is the Danes' fault, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Um, so, beta. Last week we talked about the beta. This week we're going to talk about the beta. Um, <laughs> last week we talked a bit about uh, our anticipation and uh, what we were going to do. Uh, and we talked about betas in general, what we think they should be and what they are right now and what company, companies use them for and all that stuff and uh, we had some pretty interesting discussions uh, you should uh, check it out if you haven't already or we'll, uh, post the link below yeah um, so we'll we, right here. it's fine just an hour it's one thing we talked about was we were wanted to do a dungeon uh, which we didn't get to do because uh, yeah <laughs> time I mean, I have a daughter that I have to tend to during the day, uh, and I don't have a girlfriend who doesn't play Guild Wars 2, so that doesn't help the matter. Um, and you were busy with your your school and uh, all that yeah, stuff. Sad, yeah. Sadly, we didn't get to the, that level. Uh, maybe next beta weekend event. Uh, <laughs> we are gonna say that you know, if there's ten beta weekends, we'll still be saying it like, well, maybe this weekend we can. And you know, I could have, I could have made it, but. That's because you're a slacker. One. Person. I like my daughter and I like spending time with her. And two, I've done a lot of other stuff in the game. Like, I spend a lot of time crafting, uh, just walking around, having fun, doing a jumping puzzle. Uh, we did some World v. World, and, you know, I didn't feel. And I actually did play, uh, like, two alt characters, and I actually enjoyed that. I don't want to feel like I rush myself and spoil content. I kind of don't want to do dungeon. I'd want to do dungeon, but in life, <laughs> preferably. But isn't there... How many dungeons is there? Because I guess if there's, Eight, if there's I think. enough... Then just ruining the first one is probably all right. It's, it's like eight, and then every version has like... Uh, every version has three different versions. So yeah. Like, yeah, with all those different difficulty modes, I don't mind them at all, but it's not exactly new content anymore when you've been through them the first time. Well, it depends, because you do, you do go into new areas of the dungeon. I oh, don't know. wait, is that... Yeah, that's right, it's... Can, can you decide on your own, or is that like... Explorable mode. That yeah, but isn't there also something where, you know, you can you can branch out in the dungeon and choose mm-hmm. to go, you know, like, left to right? Yeah, stuff opens up that you haven't been da- been able to do in, like, the, the first run. So okay, so it will feel a little bit... I don't know uh, if you've ever played Rift. Rift did that as well, with Expert okay, in dungeons. Okay, I... Which is actually quite it's, cool. Uh, that it's works all right really well. To have something to to make it, yeah, to make it just change a little bit. Yeah. But, but yeah, hopefully we'll get to do that. Uh, but that's what basically what we talked about beta. Uh, but in this week's topic, will this also be beta? Well, <laughs> you know, what have we done? Uh, what, what and what did we think? Uh, what things have we noticed uh, that were good or bad that we so want to we'll elaborate like on? Exactly. Going through what our experience was in the last beta, and then giving some feedback on it. Yeah, and we shall talk a bit about the necromancer. Even though I only had like four levels on it, and you haven't played at all, we're gonna try to give you some insight on what that profession actually is. Right. Right. But first and foremost, uh, some Guild Wars 2 related news. Um, Project Tyria. Not much this week. No, uh, I'm gonna show off Project Tyria because. 
it's awesome and everyone should look at it uh some new pictures got posted since our last time we mentioned it uh i'm every time well, i look uh, at this i am amazed by the level of detail that arena Art puts into this world i kind of like i think it's the first um the first picture in there on the front page let me see if i can find it this one like the very the, the very top picture right now yeah that one that that swamp picture it just looks amazing I've been the there. The, the, yeah, I've, what? I've been there. What? Where? In which? Is that the human standing zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, I, that's actually where I did uh, the Shadow of the BMF event, which is like this giant monster that comes out, and you have to. It, it's like a two-phase fight. You fight him, and then you, he spawns three portals, and you have to kill the portals, and monster come through it, and then fight him again. It's pretty fucking nice. cool. Even though it wasn't that hard, it was still something worthy at level 15 to do. That's very nice. God damn it! I still haven't had any like real epic events. No, <laughs> sadly. Uh, but yeah, go check out the site projecteria. Uh, dot blogspot. Dot. I know it, it says for me, always... but it's just dot com, so that doesn't. It's just because you can put there whatever I think because it's from that blogspot. Dot com site. Mm -hmm. Um. It's yeah. always interesting to see those pictures, to see how, how well, the, the graphical, how much have changed, and, and, you know, if there's been any kind of development, like uh, towns that are now in ruin and stuff like that, and get the comparison. It's really cool, especially since, you know, you go underwater the next line shot and you, you see that, and, you know, even if you haven't played Guild Wars 2, just to think of the fact that it was there, and that to have that level of detail is really cool. Yeah, it had the shoot city, yeah, indeed. The history makes sense. I always love when lore checks out and you know it works in a game that's that that belongs in an MRPG. Uh, but m m I mean, this wow, I've been here before. Oh wow, how this has changed. You know, it's like coming back to uh, the place you grew up ten years later, and it's like oh oh, they did this and that, and you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, next piece of news is not really super exciting. Uh, Arena Net <laughs> is hiring character artists. Uh, if you're watching this and you are qualified to do this, which we obviously aren't, um, uh, go oh, check so it you out. have some skills. I have some skills. <laughs> I'll show them right Bring now. Them All right, is it? A, is it? A, it's a cheese. <laughs> it's, oh, it's a nice portrait. You almost get it. <laughs> <laughs> There. Is that is that supposed to be a face or is that just supposed to be a cheese? A cheese with a smiley. Okay, good. Uh, God, yeah, great. You're such a hater. <laughs> you, you're such creative, Rosie. I uh, the famous <laughs> the dragon, yeah. But yeah, uh, if you're qualified, go work there. That place looks pretty awesome to work. Um, yeah, not much to add to that. Really, I wonder though, they're hiring character artists. Is that for like future Futuri. projects or? It's it's kind of. As far as I know, ArenaNet has only made Guild Wars, like right? They haven't done anything else but Guild Wars. So. No, I don't think so. And it's it's kind of odd that they're putting it up like this, you know, because I don't know. I guess that normally you know big companies always have have uh, spots open for new people so putting it up in a, in a blog post like this seems kind of like we really want someone right now ish yeah uh and yeah i i'm it might be they're starting you know now that this game is about ready to ship they may be starting to work on an expansion because given that it's free to play they probably want to get out they are the working uh fine fans i think any mmo that comes out needs to be working on that already yeah Kind of like Triumph yeah. did. The, they did that um, immediately as well. So, I mean that 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 may be why they. I don't think I don't think they have directly reduced the the size of the team who are working on the, on um, on Guild Wars 2 yet. No. Because they're not unless you know they they have probably have some people that are just not needed anymore and then that can move on to other uh, to other projects. But I I don't think they're deliberately cut down in the man hours they're spending on Guild Wars 2 just yet. But it would it would be logical to you know expand the team to have more people working on on expansions that like like Blizzard that has two expansion teams running at all times in World of Warcraft that are just working async credits what's that called you know they're working on a different expansion 
all the time. Yeah, exactly. Interesting, interesting. Um, but uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned, the game can be launched. It was uh, super smooth. Uh, but before we start talking about that, uh, there's something else I want to mention. It's not really news, but I found this uh, cool site here that uh, is called www.gw gw2codex.com uh, I will link the description below of course and what this site d does is you need to become a member and it's really easy uh, and then you can make your build and you can save it here you can like, go through these steps you choose your weapons you choose your healing skill, utility skill, elite skill your talent points, sorry trade points and then you get this uh, overview and then you post it but the cool part is that Everyone's build that saves it gets saved here and put into a category. So you can look uh, by profession or by type. And people have already made quite a lot of cool things. So it's, it's, uh, if you and you, are, can, you can vote on them. That's actually a pretty cool idea. You know, that a lot of people can vote on your build, so that means you, you, are easy, you can easily yeah. find the popular builds. Yeah, and if they're good or not. And, and you know, that's that's I, I love that kind of stuff. So be sure to check that shit out. It's... Uh, a lot of fun to go through the what yeah, people come up with. Even though you know it's so early, things are gonna change. It's still beta. Uh, people don't know shit really. I mean, they, they it might work now, but it might not work in a month from now. So, but still keep it in mind because when this game goes live, this will be a very interesting site to look at. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just checking out uh, uh, what's it called, Guardian uh, building here already. <laughs> because I've been kind of like, well, how do I want to play this? You know and it, it, it'll probably take a long time before you really find a, a, a spec that just suits you and find the right number of utility skills that really suit your playstyle. There is so much customization in those trade systems that I think it's going to take a long time to fill, to actually build some kind of cookie cutter spec. And I don't think it's going to be just one per profession either. I think there's going to be several options that mm -hmm. are going to do it. Because, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like in WoW where you... you if you want to be good at something, you go down one, at least all the way to the bottom, and then you branch out a little bit. No, it it it's more like in this game. You in well in WoW, you have each tree has a specific role or purpose, <laughs> and in, here in Guild Wars 2, it's much more like that. That you you'll probably be speaking for a, a specific purpose as well. That I want this to be a very offensive caster build, or I want this to be a very supportive uh, melee build, or, or you know something like that. But you are pretty much free to do whatever you want with your character. Yeah, because what I've seen, right, if you look at those skill tools and stuff, um, what I did, I went for air in my element list. Uh, but the first minor trait that I got, or the big minor trait that I could choose, I think, was that your crits would heal you or something like that. So they're, they're very viable. They all have a little bit of something. Just because the water one, you get increased healing and health from, doesn't mean... Everything is going to be based on increasing your healing in that that particular build, so it's it's very flexible and it's going to be very interesting to see what what's going to be necessary for like certain boss fights and what people come up with for that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess at least I could already when we did some World as well, I could I could feel that the, my current you know utility skills I I had picked weren't enough. For what we or weren't good enough for what we're doing. I had some other ones I would rather use. I actually don't think I, I don't change them doing the fight because I was stupid. But it was like, oh, so I have this one, but that doesn't really that doesn't really do anything when we're in these huge battles. So I'd much rather have someone that perhaps could cut off the enemies or something or, or slow them down. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, lots, 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 lots of learning to do. Yeah. Yeah, and that, not to mention that you have different weapons as well, so the whole playstyle is based on your weapons and on your traits, so you can mix and yep. match. That's very cool. But beta, right, we get we did get to play. Uh, if you... What do you think about the beta? What did, what did you think? Was it... Did you have a smooth experience, or did you have a lot of problems? Uh, I had a very smooth experience as well. Um, the only problem I noticed was the login servers on Friday night, I think. Mm -hmm. They went down, and it wasn't really a problem, except that apparently you have to use those login servers to jump between servers. So we wanted, or I wanted to go from, 
whatever place in the world and then to to Lance Ark, but I couldn't because the login servers were down. So right. I was kind of I could still play it fine, just fine, but I was kind of stuck in, in in whatever zone I was in at that point. Mm -hmm. But besides from that, and that I, was when Friday evening. I think it was Friday evening. Right. Yeah, I, I heard about that um, that people had problems, but I went to bed at like twelve, and I. I never logged out before that, so I didn't really have that problem. Yeah, exactly. So the only, my only problem was the, was the changing of, uh, mm. of zones in my. Uh, but but, other, at least. but other than that, nothing. No, nothing, me neither. I no issues. No problems at all, and my God, was the game running smooth this time? Uh, I was pretty much running solid 50 frames, 60 frames per second, except for in World v. World when there were like 40 plus people on your screen and dropped down to 20-ish or something. But yeah. it was, that was still very doable compared to like the 10 that it was before that. And there were some areas like I, I have this in the beginning area of the humans, like right before the big city. That that area doesn't seem to work very well for my computer. I don't know why. I have a beast of a PC, so but it drops down to like. 30 and that's kind of odd. I don't know if that's optimization problem or if that's just something in the, with the drivers or if it's an area that that just really requires I mean, a lot. It, I mean, I've seen that in other games too. It's weird, but it's just like you you enter this area and all of a sudden your frame rate just commits suicide and you're like, what? How is this? How is this different from the the, the place it just was, right? And yeah. it can be so many things. Sorry, I just have to turn off my heater. Um, because it was kind of kind of cold, but it's not really cold, so. Yeah. But yeah, uh, optimization definitely. You can notice. I hope they're gonna optimize it, more. It I I reckon they. I mean, they they said that the SLI and the crossfire still wasn't working, or you know that the game didn't support crossfire and SLI. I don't know. I'm I'm running and uh, I'm running crossfire on my computer, and I didn't really notice any huge problems. No. At any point, except for the yeah, when there was a lot of players, it it. Kind of get, it, it got like it, but did they ever so mention that they're gonna add DirectX 11 support to their game? I think I, so. I, I well, yeah. What is it now? Is it, it's it's is it only nine right now. Yeah, it's nine, right? I uh, good question actually. But I guess I guess they will, won't they? Yeah. Um. I, one thing I had to take my shadows to high instead of ultra because when I was filming with DX Story, it went down to like 20 instead of staying on 30 on some yeah. areas, so I had to take that notch. But that 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 was such a small difference that it doesn't really hurt. But I, th I think that they're not done uh, optimizing yet. I think at least I don't think so. I hope I not. I think they're going for I think they're going for DirectX 10 at least. Mm. Okay. Um. There doesn't seem to be any word in DirectX 11 that I can find, you know, just with a quick googling. So, but yeah, they they definitely make a ton of improvement on that front already, and I'm I'm guessing they'll continue to improve on that as well. It's it's probably not one of the biggest concerns while you are developing the game because you have a lot of other features you want to complete, and so you can start working on other stuff. But it's good to see that they're actually putting a lot of time and effort into it. Yeah, definitely. Uh... There, there were so many changes. I mean, we we went through the changes in the previous episode that they were they were massive. But when you log in, it it just hit me like the, actually this the stuff that they had done is is pretty amazing. That what did we're, you? We're, we're not waiting for nothing. It's like the UI changed and yeah. The, what were your so what were your first reaction when you logged in again? What was most immediately you know visible to you or noticeable? Uh, the tooltips, I think. Um, which were kind of annoying in the end because they popped up everywhere. <laughs> you know, you, those those help, help, yeah, help, yeah, help yeah. tips? Those help oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I reckon if you can't turn them off already because I didn't really look for it, that you will be able to turn them off uh, in, in the game. I mean, that makes I still, sense. I still, I still quite get it. There must be a better way to... This could probably be an entire topic on its own, but there must be a better way to do help, uh, you know... Uh, general in-game help, or uh, yeah, I wouldn't call them tool tips as much, but just tips and stuff. That than having it to pop up repeatedly, because I was like, okay, they have added this, yeah, cool, okay, so they they're telling me about this F1 feature to. It's just because you uh, haven't uh, pressed it yet or used it yet. That's why it popped up. No, no, because it kept popping up even when I used it. it oh, that, that's okay. Kind of, that's kind of the thing that it just. I I got it so many. There were so many things I was reminded to. <laughs> 
how how to use repeatedly. And I was like, that's yeah, annoying. thanks game, it's cool and all, but I kind of have. So yeah, exactly. Why why not a system that's based on when you use it, it won't show up again or something like that. Yeah. And or, or, uh, and especially since I really love this game that it doesn't do much for hand hand holding and then they do stuff like that which kind of goes against that whole idea that you need to figure things out a little bit by yourself. I understand that they add them, but at least give us the option when the first one pops off to have a button say OK, but never show any tooltips yeah. again or something like that. Yeah, that's like the worst back in in World of Warcraft when you're creating a new character and you oh. just had all these help help things pop again. It's like, no, I am not a new player. Stop yeah. it. And every game does it as well. Like I, Aeon yeah. has that as well. Like whole freaking full screen videos and it's like go away, fucking hell. Yeah, exactly. Any game should, you know, any MMO should have an option when you make a character say. Are you an experienced MMO player or are you new? And then when you're experienced, you don't get that shit. Uh, maybe a few ones that, because the game is completely different from something else, that show up. But not like, oh, to move forward, press W, A, and D. And, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's really intuitive. Exactly. So have like, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I can just have a little box that says, okay, I, I, have, I, I know this game or I don't know this game. Like, I'm, I'm completely new or I'm... Uh, or at least just give it so if you have if you have a character already on your account then you are able to to skip over it or whatever just something so it's it's not as annoying for for older players it's fine that it's right. for new players but yeah right and then the the second thing was chat bubbles I think uh, awesome any MMO should have those and the local chat that was the local chat was perfect uh, you know any MMO um, again should have that so. That's that good. was some pretty pretty great improvements. <laughs> I, I noticed, you know, when we were playing World Wars World, how suddenly people in so in the beginning there wasn't really any chat going on at all. Just some people. We had some fighting going. We joined up with some guys. We we ran around doing stuff. But then more and more people started to to join up, and and eventually, you know, they were they were actually starting to use this uh, zone chat to to coordinate and like, okay, where are we going next time? And hey, we got some enemies coming up the western front and stuff like that. Yeah. It was really great. A, a great addition. And yeah, the, the chat bubbles as well, because I'm I'm like, right. so I got I got knocked over by yeah. some guy, should I and uh, Amber, you should introduce. Or you know, uh, got uh, got killed by something, and then uh, mm -hmm. some guy comes to uh, to help me up again. I I just like to type thank you, you know, just like a little thanks for helping me. Yeah. And you could do that, and you could actually, you could also chat while being down, I think. Maybe uh, not while being dead, but not while you're dead, but while you're down, yeah. That makes yeah. sense, right? So. I, I'm, yeah, I think that's how it worked. So it's it's small stuff like that. It helps so much. It felt so much better that you were actually able to to just toggle people or write a, a quick thank you or a quick hi or whatever whatever you wanted to write, you know? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, it's it's really nice. I mean, it was just a feature that. If they didn't implement that, that would just just be silly. Mhm. Mm yeah. Especially that they had they had the chat bubbles in the game for the NPCs and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's just... Exactly. Uh, then the second thing was uh, that you see here as well uh, is the the mini map. Uh, so many people have bitched about that they want. I saw on the forums that they want to have the round mini map back. Uh, I well, disagree. I, I, I. Yeah. Sure. You could give them an option, but. Always, when I make my UI in like World of Warcraft, I always get a square one because it fits better with the UI and it just it, it shows more because it's square. Uh, and you can resize it, with, which was nice. Uh, I actually had it quite big, uh, which was very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you could like drag in your mini map to look in the area without having to open your map. You could like uh, hold your left mouse button and move to another area on your mini map. Yep. yep. Oh. Nice. And okay. when, when you start moving, it, you immediately <laughs> let like pinpoint back to where you were on your location. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. I didn't know that. That's very handy because you don't because yeah, you have, yes. you have such you a, you have just such a more like local view, so it's easier to just do that rather than press M, zoom in, find yourself, and all that stuff, and and do it like that. So that's very nice. You could also actually you know enlarge it quite a lot. Yeah. You did. Indeed. Indeed. Um, nice. So. In General, a very very nice addition as well. The Dutch energy bar, perfect as well. Uh, yeah, it's so so much so much better to have it right there. Yeah. 
they changed uh, the, the boons and conditions on you as well. Yeah, they added a little timer around it, like the white line that uh, empties up, uh, which was yeah, quite visible it, actually. It's it should also they added a, a countdown timer for your uh, the skills in your hot boss. That was already there the first beta weekend. Are you sure? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that I enabled that the first beta weekend event. Did you have to go to some kind of option to find them? Yeah. Okay, then it's just me being a noob. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, and uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> and they added some uh, something else as well in the options that I can't remember right now, because they have the fast targeting. That's for one thing. Mm -hmm. Where you can just hover where someone with your mouse and you put down your AOE where your mouse is without having to place your AOE attack, uh, which is nice. But in a lot of cases, very impractical because you kind of want to like wait a few seconds and see where you want to place it, like walk and place at the same time. That's often yeah, what that, I do. Yeah, that's, like that's generally my experience as well because it can't. Uh, maybe if you're getting really good at the game, you can like, okay, I know exactly where this is going to yeah, land. You know the radius of it and everything, and yeah. Yeah, but but I was still at the, at the you know place where where I wanted to see before I placed it. Yeah. Especially since you can just like, even if you want to do it fast, uh, you could just do like AOE and then click your last button really fast, so it's not really a big deal. No, 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 not at all. But yeah. Uh, any any other changes you can think of that were the 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 key binding were a lot better this time around. Uh, yes, uh, modifiers, which made my elementalist perfect because the first thing I did in this game. I've not done this with any other MMO before, is I rebound my A and D to straving. Um, because I walk and cast a lot. And um, in WoW, when I would do that, I would hold my right mouse button and press A or D, right, to strafe. And then use like one and three, one, two, three, whatever, two, three. But when you need to cast in WoW, you stand still, so you don't need to move. But in this game, if I would do that, I had to hold my right mouse button and then press D and then press all my abilities while walking is really awkward. So, and besides, I can't place my AOE abilities because I'm already holding my right mouse button, right? So I rebound my A and D to strafing, so I could just like press D and strafe to the side and then place my AOEs, and it was very nice yeah. actually. Uh, and my attunements to control one, two, three, four, which what I, I needed. I have been I have been doing the whole strafe thing for quite a while actually, but yeah. that's. That was because I wanted to I wanted to free up. I, I were using uh, Q and E before for strafing and A and D for turning, if in some uh, few situation. But it turned, you know, I realized that I hardly ever turned with the keyboard anymore, hmm. because that's bad when you can do it with yeah, the mouse. Yeah, I've never really done it either in WoW, but I just got so accustomed to holding my right mouse button in a game that it wasn't really necessary to rebind it or anything. No, no, but the thing was then that I'm still using, I was still using Q and E because I still use strafing quite a bit. Yeah. So I moved Q and E down, I moved st strafing down to A and D, and now that's pretty much just the default way I play most of the time. And then I have Q and E available for other hotkeys. No. Or to, to bind to other stuff. Indeed. Uh, but uh, other than that, they added, uh, I think when you do class press. <laughs> Cross profession combos. Uh, it added a little title to above the where it hit, uh, and also the little heart thingies or whatever. I'm not sure if they were hearts, but like this icon. Uh, when someone got a condition, like a friendly target, I think. Sure, it wasn't when you removed a, a boon. Or from was it removed? It, it was I think something. it was when you removed a, a boon from a friendly player. Hmm. Okay. But to be honest, I'm not quite sure because it was popping up sometimes. But every time it was popping up, I was in some kind of combat, right? So it's like, wait, does some? No, I don't. I don't have time. I have to kill this. Yeah. Uh, Indeed. So, but the, but they're definitely trying to improve uh, the visibility of different stuff, which I think it's fine because. Yeah. Again, I'm not. I'm not sure how big of a deal boons and condition are going to be in the game yet. But if they're going to have any any kind of importance for the gameplay and, you know, for PvP and stuff, you want to be able to see quite easily when you remove something or if you can remove something or if it's worth doing and all that stuff because otherwise it's just going to be like, I'm just going to use it, whatever, but I don't actually know if anybody is getting any benefit from it. 
Yeah, something should like visibly come up on your screen like really nicely like say like available combo or something like that. That would also yeah for uh exactly but I at I, the same time being able to learn them and get good at them and notice them is also mm-hmm. would also Yeah, be good. exactly. You just you you want it to be very visible somehow that it's that it's available like uh, we've, we've seen this ability where you have a, a wall of fire and then people uh, are shooting arrows through the fire and they're catching on fire and doing more damage. That's fine because you, you have the, the wall is pretty obvious, the firewall is pretty obvious to you, but unless you know about it, it's like... Eh, but that's, that's just where team play comes in. You need to talk yeah. about that when you're in Ventrilo or something like that. You need to say, okay, I'm going to put down my electric walls and element list. If you shoot, shoot through, through this as an engineer or whatever, uh, your bullets will cause a shock effect on the target. Uh, or if you put down ice and the warrior does this whirlwind that everyone gets an ice buff or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you, need to, you, you need to come... But how, how viable is that? Because there are so many different options. So... So it's gonna be like yeah. constantly. Are you constantly gonna be on vent, like putting down ice every, putting down fire? And and it's kind of this thing where they they want it to be viable, I guess. So it's actually worth doing because it is it is some kind of effort to be putting down this and then being coordinating with other people, all that stuff. Or if you're just in some kind of world versus world, do you actually want to do it? Because will people know that they can use it for to increase the damage? Mm. And so on the one hand, if it's too low, it might not be something you want to do. But if it's too high, it, what then? Then a coordinated team might just be, you know, very, very powerful. I, I think powerful. it's it's gonna be just situational, and I think it's gonna add a lot to it, but not too much. But it, I think I don't think it's gonna be super uh, per se necessary to do it in like battles or something like that. But it will give you a slight advantage, and it just I think it's more gonna be based on reaction, like. If you are melee and see a firewall, you charge through it if you have the means yeah. to do it. It doesn't mean you have to go run back for it and then charge through it to get an effect or something like that. But it just happen just it's just like the difference is gonna be like Elementalist put this wall down and one person walks through it and the other one sees, Hey, wall fire, I'm gonna push my charge ability in, you know? And that's yeah. gonna be the difference. It could be, yeah, just like you have a you have a ranger standing around shooting at some people, and then suddenly he notices that a, a guy puts down a, a you know wall of fire on his left, and that just means <laughs> okay, I'm just switching to some people over there instead because then I'll do more damage. But it's not like you know, yeah. Uh, it could also mean a lot, I guess, in if the dungeons are going to be very hard, where you want every last bit of DPS. Yeah, but that that, that that's also it. I think from what I've seen from dungeons, there there are so you need to. Th- Everything that we know about dungeons from World of Warcraft, I think you need to let go because you're, yeah, but you're gonna be so much different into a fight. It's not gonna be like, okay, you're gonna tank, I'm gonna heal. It's gonna be no, like. No, but you need you need the most possible. I mean, a fight is over quicker if you do if you do more damage. Of course, you also have to survive and stuff. But if you're shooting an arrow at a at a monster, or I mean, it will make a difference if if some guys put down a firewall in front of you, you'll do more damage. The monster will go down quicker. Yeah. Yeah, okay, but it's not going to be like, oh, the tank is almost low HP, I'm going to throw him some extra heals, and no, 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 and then no, we're no, safe. No, no. I, it's going to be didn't... like, oh, shit, he took a big beating, uh, we need to do something about it. Slow the, slow the guy, you need to dodge away, put down a stun, whatever, and it's going to be a lot more reactive. And when someone dies, you can still res him, and, and it's going to be a lot more active combat, and I think it's going to be different every time you do it, rather than the tank and spank fights that we've been used to. But what I'm trying to say is that if the fight is going to be really difficult, you you want people who are able to put out the the highest amount of damage while not dying. Yeah. Pretty much. Exactly. And in that in situations like that, you could really use you know uh, cross professions combos to increase that damage. Yeah. If you're but but, but it's not necessary. If they don't put an enrich time in, then it doesn't matter if you have high DPS or not either. If you have yeah, control over the fight. But then, then you won't you be able just, to do it. But to be honest, if you're just able to kite stuff around until it dies, that's not fun. Yeah, I guess it needs to that, be have that. It has to have that right balance where if you're, you don't want to risk being, uh, it to go on too long, but you also don't want to focus too much on DPS. It needs to be a I balance. Mean, I, I I know that I know that in raids timers is kind of superficial. You know that is just put in there for that specific purpose of. Uh, asking players to to up the DPS a bit, 
Yeah. But I'd almost rather have that than a fight that you can just uh, outlast by by standing around for an hour, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true because WoW is much more a gear-based game, and those fights are purely made for that reason because you need to have a specific gear in order to, to hit that DPS in order to kill the boss. Some, Whereas, some of the times, but all, all other times it's also just because the, you, you shouldn't be able to just take one tank and then a bunch of healers and then complete the no, fight, right? No, but that's, that's what I mean, that's a gear base. Whereas here it's going to mm. be more like your ability base. Yes, you need to be able to dodge and, and you know put down heals and all that stuff, but you also need to be able to do DPS. It's going to be very much a combination of a, a, you need to be able to do everything, not just one thing very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, and everybody will be contributing. That's more than likely that everybody will be contributing because you can't you can't be, be casting a heal all the time. So it's more likely that you'll be uh, you'll be doing every DPS uh, cooldown you have as well, or all your DPS abilities will also be used, even if you're playing the supportive class in that dungeon. But yeah, I just, because I just, I just hope they're hitting that place where the combat indeed feels very much alive and reactive without you being able, without players being able to cheese it by say hiding him up around for half an hour. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, let's uh, let's leave that discussion at that because we <laughs> got way out of attention right there. Yeah. Uh, so we've uh, done some World v World. Uh, I'm actually shown this video here. Uh, that that remains awesome uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion, especially since you know we started about the horrible, uh, like oh what are we doing and the Eternal Battlegrounds we were getting full and we couldn't join. But yeah. we ended up in a position where we had like one tower and one keep, our main keep left on our own map, and we took our whole whole borderlands back in the end of the video. Yeah, and that that last. That was good. So we, sp we spent like the first uh, twenty five percent of the of the time we we used in World of World and just. I don't even know what we were doing, to be honest. It was just a mess. We were getting into different servers because I was being a retard, I think, and and we were ending up in some place where we were just trying to get to a tower, but there were so many enemies that whenever we got close, we would get pushed back. And yeah. <sighs> Right, but yeah, getting back to our home world, seeing, oh man, there's actually some work to be done here because they all the major keeps were under the control of yeah, the enemy players. And, and suddenly like, everyone started communicating, right, in the chat, and yeah, it went really and, well. More and more people just joined in. It was it was it was glorious. <laughs> and it, it felt it felt really good to do that. Uh, though, I do think I have some concerns when it comes to World to World. Is that one, traveling on foot is a pain in the ass, uh, especially since you use all the waypoints in the game. Mm -hmm. it, it sucks. Uh, that they need to do something. Not not something drastic, but they need to do something about it. Maybe give like at least people on their home home uh, borderlands maybe two extra waypoints as an advantage to defend. Uh, maybe give like a temporary uh, fix, fix, fixed amount of people can teleport to a keep that's being attacked, like 10 people yeah. can go there or something or like that. fixed amount of people can rest, that's perhaps you could have some kind of, of rest count for keeps, right? So Have some kind of resource that, that actually has to do with that, like, you know, make, make this whole system that Yes, you can have people rising for that, but you need to do this in order to to get that buff or something like that, you know. Yeah, or only only a, a limited amount of people can can resurrect that the keep. But yeah, I agree. It was kind of annoying to I'm getting I'm I've gone all down south and you know participating in fights, then I get killed. I have to start all the way back and. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh... Uh, no, I totally agree. I was thinking something along the lines of perhaps a hundred percent speed increase, which disappeared the moment you took damage or dealt damage, so you could use it to get to a position really quickly, but you couldn't actually engage in any fights, or you couldn't, yeah, mm. do a lot of stuff with it, but only to to move around. Yeah. Mm. Another concern I have is 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 this gonna last this this awesomeness because. If this is all going to be that big groups are going to fight against each other the whole time, uh, is that going to stay fun? Or is it gonna, because it already got a bit repetitive, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be fun in, in a few months from now? Uh, what are they going to do to make you feel like you, you want to go into World War and defend? You know, they need to, I think, personalize something, like do something more with the resources and uh, guilds. 
Uh, but they already talked well, about this. There is something about the guilds, but uh, I mean, we haven't been in any position to test that out yet. But where the guilds is supposed to be able to claim. But that, that's not that's not in whatever. the game yet, though. I think. No, it may not be. I ha I have no idea because we're not in a, in a guild that's big enough. If they add that though, that will already help because then if you claim a keep with resources and all that stuff, you can just quest and then suddenly say someone saying like, "Oh, we're being attacked! Quickly come to us!" and then you can help and aid them. Mm -hmm. uh, which that that would already help a lot, I think, with something like that. But I think they could add a little bit more. That add adds a little bit more immersion to the world view world. Whereas this uh, right I now is just like big fights versus big fights. Yeah, exactly. I think my main concern is that I actually didn't felt like I had much of a choice. No. Because then we're branching out in some small groups and you all of a sudden you just run into this big, big, huge actually enemy army and they were just crushing you. It was just, that was no fight at all. You were just getting owned. You were actually, you were not even able to participate in the fight because you were get, like getting stun locked or whatever until you were dead. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? I mean, I, I was even, pretty. I was pretty good at surviving, but I mean, if you are three versus forty, you're. I mean, yeah. Screw. Yeah, exactly. But okay, cool. You can run away then, yeah. and then you can hide somewhere until you know. But you can't actively do something about it. No. No, that was kind of the way I felt because firstly we were trying to go around in smaller groups, and firstly it seems like that buffed the NPCs who are guarding the the resource uh, camps. Right. Which I guess is fine in some regards because you don't want too few people to be able to capture them, but that means if you're actually a very few people, there isn't much. You can raid caravans, which may actually mean something, but I, I, have a, I don't quite know yet how big an impact that will have. True. To, to um, be, yeah, go on. Yeah, but it's just like, besides from that, if that's all you can do, that's kind of... Yeah. You know? To be fair, though... Um, it is a beta, and you only have like 48 hours to do anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Servers are, are not well known. Uh, people haven't played much with each other, and people are just going there and zerk, and that's what they do. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, hasn't had, it hasn't had a chance to balance out. We've talked about it before that hopefully everything will balance itself out. But like best case scenario, what could happen is good PvP servers that do have those guilds that individually work really well together and like talk between them on the world v world map what they're doing, uh, they could ha do really well and, you know, they get higher up in the, the chain and they, they have to fight other people that are also very well coordinated, other servers. Um, but it could also just be everyone stays like this and it's going to be just a giant jerk fest. But, yeah, this is only 48 hours and in the, in the real world, or when the game goes live, it will be a two-week match, right? So it's going to be a little bit different. Because at some point it will be just like, yeah, okay, we're going back and forth and we need to add some tactics to this shit, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess, you, well, you're very right. It is beta as beta and all that. So, I mean, one thing is that they can still tweak a lot of stuff. And another thing is that the servers we, we are fighting against are, there's been no, you know, um, no kind of ranking done yet, you know. So, so I'm I'm sure that the fight will be somewhat more interesting once you get to fight servers that are closer to your rank because the playstyles might be more suited to fight each other. But yes, yeah, just pure, purely from my perspective, at least, it, the 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 thing I experienced just didn't seem to encourage small group play nearly as much as I'd hoped. Hmm. But of course, it is it is a pretty tough balance to hit because you want you want to require some bigger groups for taking the towers and the keeps and the forts and whatnot. Yeah. And and then it seems like okay they also wanted some slightly stronger groups to take on the resource uh, encampments mm -hmm. than 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 last beta at least and I guess small groups seems to be actually just reduced to to attacking the caravans right and I'm just yeah, yeah they, 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 they need to there wasn't anything they else you could do they could they could do some stuff they need to add, add, do something more with the resources they need to do more with the guilds. Uh, promote some stuff with uh, with smaller groups that they can do, maybe like smaller objectives uh, and stuff that help out a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was kind of what I'm thinking, if that was possible. Of course, you don't want to drag everybody away from the world versus world because that would be stupid, but right. it would be kind of nice that if you don't just want to end up in one big group to serve things, that you could actually do something else. Admittedly, we had some, I had at least some pretty cool moments, you know, when we were 
standing in this fort or being uh, under siege, and we were just we were just barely keeping the enemies away from the gate. <laughs> they were always trying to get close, and we would like get, throw a ton of AOE on, on top of them, and they were pulled back. But we couldn't get out because there were so many enemies over there. Yeah. And we had this other big group of uh, of our own guys that were they were attacking a, a fort across a river, and they they came back because we were kind of calling for help in the in the in the chat. Mm-hmm. And they came back over the bridge all of a sudden, and they just broke the siege entirely, and we were able to get out and, and hunt the enemies down, pretty much. And, I mean, that, that that kind of stuff is great fun, at yeah. least when you're on the winning side. So they they added some stuff, right? Uh, they added some dungeons in in the or underground areas in the World's Map. I have not seen it, but... Uh... I think that was in the Eternal Battleground only, but I'm not okay. sure. Uh, so we'll have to see, we have to get into that eternal battleground mm. at some point to be honest. Mm. But so what, one one thing I actually noticed in the wall was well that was starting to annoy me a bit is what are all those mobs doing there or is it just me? Yeah, there are some areas with a lot of mobs. They they I don't know. Because they, they want to make it feel like a world, I guess. So yeah, and I can, and I kind of get that perspective, but it's also kind of annoying to try and you know. We were, we were hunting down a player, and all of a sudden we had like six wolves on our tail or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of annoying to trying to kill one player, and then all of a sudden you're just getting swarmed by creeps that are trying to, or by mobs that are trying to kill you, and all you want to do is actually get back in the fight, and you don't <sighs> want to get killed by these mobs. Right. But I don't know. That was just the thing that, yeah. We'll have to see about that. Uh, uh, about the the underground things and the mobs. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It didn't bug me that much, but there were moments that it did bug me a little bit. But I guess it's just you're gonna have to live with it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I'm just thinking that I, I don't necessarily think it belonged there, even though it makes it feels more like a world. That's true, but at the same time, I also just think it's it's annoying to suddenly have a ton of mobs after you because you're participating in some PvP combat where you know you want to be able to to run around wherever when you're fighting. You want to have the space, but if you're suddenly getting attacked by a lot of... Uh, and, I mean, if you're in some kind of fight and, and uh, uh, you're getting attacked by uh, some mobs, that can totally turn the fighter, in, you know, against you. Yeah. So, what I'm showing here right now is a part of the jumping puzzle that I did. Oh, I actually didn't see that yet. You lucky bastard you found one of those. I haven't... Uh... You're not jumping a hell of a lot, are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> It was a really easy one to admittedly uh, somewhere in a human area. Um, yeah, you just went into this cave. You did uh, some jumping, and there was this red down in the bottom that gave you a clue about what uh, what it was, which was kind of cool. Uh, but you just jumped through something, went through a hallway, jumped some more, I think, and then you got to this part where you need to kill these blob blob mobs that respawn really really quickly, and one. There were like two elite ones, and that was a lot of fun. And in the end, you got a chest. You got like two chests actually, one along the way and one in the end. So it's a lot of fun, definitely. Did you get some good gear? Uh, not for me, no. But there, they, I think they've upped the the drop for the in there because people have complained about that there were just whites in there and it was kind of useless. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. But I'm not going to show more of that because that video is going to go live soon, so. <laughs> How um <coughs> how does the chest works? Was it shared loot or yeah. was it each guy got an individual or? Uh yeah, each guy got individual loot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very cool. So, yeah, I I I only seen one of those jumping puzzles so far, and it took me like half an hour to get to the bottom of it because there was these tiny ravens that were sitting all over the place. And if you ran into it, it, it they would knock you off, uh, and you had to start all over. Mm. And I got all the way to the end of that jumping puzzle, and the mobs on the end, they killed me. Oh. And it was not it was not like, oh, I'm this close, I can almost uh, do the... And just, no, they just killed me. <laughs> it was funny, because it started with, I remember that, um, you get into the cave, and there's this woman sitting there, and uh, she, there's like this moment where she gets up, and she like runs towards the edge, and it's like, Oh, I need to jump there. No, no, no. And then she walks back, and then she, she talks herself. Uh, she encourages herself to try it again, and then she runs again to the ledge. She's like, "No, no, I can't do it. Never mind. I'm, I'm, I'll fail." And she sits down again. So that's kind of like a clue that maybe right, if you jump right. there, you will find something and go further. And that's exactly nice. what it was. So that's kind of cool. 
So it was it was really hidden. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, then uh, the closing event, you didn't get to do that. I didn't get to do that. I were that was like nine in the morning, wasn't it? Or our time, eight in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was fast asleep at that point. Indeed. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Uh, I'm not going to show too much of this video, but it started here. After waiting for 20 minutes, it started, and this big dragon came in flying. What? Oh, that's that looks awesome. And he was flying around. I think he was corrupting the area or something like that because mobs and players got turned into like this elemental f force uh, after you died. Uh, I turned into one mm -hmm. of these as well in the end, and. You get like five abilities based on that, and you have to kill other players. Uh, it says here, objective is your life. It says destroy the crystals. Yeah. Whoa, that's a lot of and mobs. And kill branded players. Fight back to corruption. Didn't go too well for you guys, what? No, it was like <laughs> massive versus versus uh, battles in the end. But we didn't get to finish it because it started late for as for most people, and then the servers got. Going, went offline because the beta was ended. So uh, I can quickly show a piece here. Here I am, the mob. Yeah. Okay. But so and now and then it turned into defend the uh, brand crystals and yeah. kill surviving players. So it's, it's the opposite of what. What, what happened if you died as a mob? Did you respawn as a player then? Holy no, you respawn as a mob. Oh, I, d yeah, I did okay, hear that that if you spawn in a waypoint that wasn't corrupted, that you would become a human again. But I didn't get to try that out. Okay. Oh, corrupting waypoints as well, very nice. Yeah, they, like, all the waypoints were like overtaken by crystals and those mobs, so it's really quite fun. Yeah, Which I makes me wonder if that's gonna be in like an, something they could do as an event, you know, that the whole area gets like overtaken and you have to fight it back somehow. That would Probably. be pretty cool. I mean, some kind of world events are always somewhat interesting, because and I mean, more more so in Guild Wars 2 if they have a lot of them, like <laughs> the dynamic <clears> events, <throat> but just like really, really large scale dynamic events. I'm pretty sure it was this map that you saw. This is Dragon. It, it looked like him, yeah. Or her, or it, or. Uh, but I, I think that that could be a thing, couldn't it? Hmm. Like large, large scale dynamic events that are really. that, that just, just doesn't span a, a small, tiny area, but like. Like, like, yeah, spans a, a whole great area. Yeah, it could be a thing. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's some very interesting stuff that we haven't seen yet that they, I think, can do uh, with these dynamic events. So hmm. yeah, I, I'm hoping we're seeing. I actually next time I, I gotta be there because I really want to try stuff like that out. I mean, I always in like World of Warcraft kind of enjoyed those those few moments, and it's always exciting in the beta because you never know if those events are coming back. Or if it's just like one time and you really want to try them, you know? Yeah. To get an experience out this of it. This actually reminds me of a change that they made in the UI. Uh, there exactly. are certain there are certain areas in the game that are, where there's a constant conflict, right? And they mm -hmm. added uh, as soon as you in, in come to an area where there's conflict that where there is constant conflict, there will be a thingy pop up on the top right of your screen saying, uh, "This area is, you know." against the centaurs oh, or yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. in conflict with centaurs but at the moment everything is silent <laughs> so you know that something could happen but nothing mm -hmm. is happening right now which i actually thought was a nice feature because a lot of times you didn't know if that was the case yeah it also g it gave kind of like a, a bit of the lore away about that area right yeah so this is this is like what's going on in this general area and yeah i think it was actually okay to say okay so or perhaps it would give indication that there was some fighting going on in one area or whatnot, it was it was all right. Mm. Um, and I actually, I can't wait to see what they're gonna change for the next beta weekend event. Probably a lot. I mean, yeah. they 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 said there there's gonna be a third one at least. So uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm just mm, nah, never mind. Indeed, uh, I'm hoping we're going to see some kind of info sooner. Than, than you know, rather sooner than later, yeah. But yeah, exactly. you know, I really they, they, they so. took a lot of time last time before they actually gave us any information out. Just like to perhaps just have a look at what, or to have a list of what they're going to look at or something, mm. something like that. But I don't think we're going to get it. It's it's more safe for them to just give us an 
a list of things they have fixed instead of a list of things they intend to fix because yeah. that list is going to be a hell of a lot longer than that list, you know? If it's going to be a week in advance what they did last week, last time, then it's fine. Uh, so, profession of this week is back. We are covering <laughs> the Necromancer. Yes. Damn, I can't wait to play in Azura or something like that. It looks so cool. Necromancers are masters of dark arts. They summon the dead to fight for them, channel blood energy and their enemies' souls. Necromancers draw on life force and use strengthen use it to strengthen or heal themselves and others. As scholars as a scholar profession, necromancers wear light armor. So Yes. Interesting. So, OC, did you have a good time mastering uh, mastering these dark arts? I only leveled to like five and it was interesting, but not for me. At least from what I saw. I've only had like a few weapons, but uh, it has a very interesting thing where you, you your um, your profession ability was like this life force bar that fills up with certain abilities that you use. And whenever there's a little bit in that bar, you can press your F1 button, which will make you go into this uh, death shroud and you get like five different abilities, four or five, I think it's actually four, uh, mm -hmm. which you can then use and your life force bar will slowly drain. Uh, either by being in that form it will drain or when you get hit it will even go further so it will like you see it like ch -ch when you so. get hit so but it's, right. it's pretty interesting because you can kind of use it as a safe mechanism when when you're almost dead you press your button and you can stay alive until then because you don't die when your life force okay out. so it's kind of like a shield as well yeah exactly all right not bad yeah and uh a lot of abilities uh with the cursors and pets uh, a lot of fiends you can summon from your utility skills actually i can uh, show that yeah, here. The, uh, yeah, here. Uh, your he first healing ability, actually, you summon a blood fiend that fights for you. If you want to get healed, you then sacrifice it and it heals you, which is kind of neat. But then you have all these uh, utility skills here. Bone minions, shadow fiends, flesh worm. And, yeah, so like, uh, like the big thing about uh, necromancers is, is their <laughs> minions. You can have all of them up at the same time, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, of course, because you can. I actually think I saw some videos with uh, with some of those necromancers running around with just a whole ton of pets after them. Here, you can have f five pets here. Did you try to get one? No, I didn't get to that level, sadly. Okay. Although, yeah, the healing one, but it died really fast. So. Yeah, I was just mostly thinking about how the pet control worked and the pet AI because they have taken last pet at least they took quite a bit of flack for the for the pet AI, and they said that, you know, made a ton of improvements to it, but... Yeah. So the weapons, uh, it has two weapon sets. Uh, you can switch between two weapons in combat. A total of eight weapons, which is not a lot, uh, but a total of 12 combinations because of the one-handers. Uh, One-handed daggers. You can dual wield daggers, it seems, or what? Yep. A scepter hmm. in your main hand, uh, focus in your offhand, a warhorn in your offhand, your staff, and I'm pretty sure you can use what an axe. Yeah, here an axe. I totally missed that because that's what you start with. And those yeah. are actually all melee based, just like with the elementalist. Um, your uh, your daggers are all close combat abilities, which is kind of cool. so. You so the casters have kind of a a melee build as well in this game. Yeah. Definitely. That's very interesting. Actually, I've always always wondered why that's not a thing more often than it is. Because why why Medium not? I mean, it makes you're more, sense, right? I mean. you're, you're more squishy as a, as an necromancer. You can only use light armor, but but still. Yeah. I don't know why I'm showing that. Sorry. Skill two. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, so the traits are Spite, Curses, Death Magic, Blood Magic, and Soul Reaping. Ooh, that sounds serious. <laughs> soul and, Reaping. And they're uh, profession-bound attunement. What's it called? Attunement? 
No. Well, the attribute? Attributes. Sorry, attribute. it's hunger. Increases hunger. the size of the life force pool. So, again, has to do with your profession ability. Which... Is, it, is it more worth it? Or is it better to let it like, charge all the way up before you use it? Well, you can stay in it longer, right? So, I guess if you increase the damage of it somehow, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I don't know what the these death shroud recharges is reduced by thirty three percent. Gain stability. Yeah. So if you go into this tree, I guess it's pretty. It's worth it. It's just an interesting. I mean, if there's if there's going to be any kind of a play, you know, between being in that how, when you want to go into that form, if you want to go it, uh, go into it in the moment it's available, if you want to wait or. I mean, if there's even going to be that question, though, it's always going to be, no, 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 you're going to go f fill up the bar, and then you can uh, mm -hmm. you can use it. That's the only way to go. I think, was it this one that had like a, a some kind of rest that you rest three people? Was that an elementalist? I can't remember. Huh, never mind. But yeah, it's... it's uh, if you like, oh, did, if you did, like to like the warlock class, much? then no, I haven't played too much of it, but I don't think it will be for me. I don't know. I, I'm just, I love the warrior right now, and elementalists are both really good professions. But yeah, it it, it is a class that's based on you know, uh, con conditions. You know, putting a lot of debuffs on your on your enemies and weaken them in different way. Use curses and stuff. Um, they have this playing around with their with their HP and their life force and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it it is very much <laughs> yeah uh, warlock necromancer kind of kind of guy as as you know them as you would expect them to be. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's worked alright. It all seems like they have a lot of you know area of um, area of effect abilities to put down. Stuff that either just applies some, uh, but, but some conditions to the enemy, or yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, this one's interesting. Blood magic, sif and health on every hidden enemy. Hmm. hmm, not bad. I actually think I played a necromancer, not necromancer, but a necromancer kind of guy in the Guild Wars One, where I was very much. You know, I I had to um, I had to get into close combat to siphon life from. From enemies, and then I had to. I think I had to use that life to to heal other players or something. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like that's what this necromancer is doing at all. I haven't really looked into the traits, even for like elementalists and stuff like that. And I don't plan on doing it until the game goes live, and I really d dig into it, like what I want to do and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's so many options, man. Yeah, exactly. But it's just. It can be dangerous to do it now, of course, because you know, you don't know they may very, they may they may very well change it just from this from this beta to the next. So yeah, I mean, from last new... beta until now, when people got fucked in the ass and had a lot of tens back, so you know they have to mm -hmm. exactly interesting. So uh, this 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 time you're going to go okay. I'm not going to go with all the ten specs, and then next beta they're going oh we just reintroduced them. It's, ah, come on. God damn it, Arena. Yeah, exactly. It's beta, so things are going to change. It's it's difficult to spend too much time preparing for it just now. Yeah, indeed. Oh, yeah. Overall, it uh, seems like a pretty okay profession. I, I'm not too interested myself, I'd say, though. Uh, Mostly because I'm not interested in pl in playing <laughs> too much with the one. I'm not interested in those minions at all. And on no. the other hand, I'm not sure I'm interested in all this booms and condition uh, playing around because it doesn't. Yeah, I I just don't think it's visible enough. You know, I've like, never like, I've never on it. I've never liked that with the warlock class in WoW either. That always I never really played that class all that much. And mm -hmm. it just uh, throws me off. But yeah, the minions, one thing. That's why I don't like a ranger either. And it's just not my style of gameplay, I think. that I don't like that. If I want to yeah. be a caster, I want to cast permanent you stuff. You want to be an elementalist. Yeah. Or a mesma. That's one of the interesting cards as well. 
Yeah. But uh, let's save that for another time. Mm -hmm. Right. So, any last words, Ozzy? Because I kind of think we were getting through this stuff. Wasn't the longest profession of the week? No. Nah. It's not much uh, we can say about it. It's just uh, to give people a little bit of an idea about what, yeah. it, might is, what it might be, you know. Because people are lazy. Just <laughs> like us. Just like us. Yeah, I was just about to say it. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. The beta was smooth. I enjoyed it. There's not much more we can say about I would, that. I would, I would just, I would literally, I would have paid more money for a longer beta event because I was writing that assignment all weekend. And of course, it's my own bloody fault to be stuck with an assignment that weekend and not having it done beforehand. But turning it in at 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 nine or something, you know, Monday morning. So there was pretty much no way I could I could play the beta. No. Just what, couldn't I have? If it were running until Wednesday or something, I would have plenty of time. Hmm. Yeah, this comes with the whole thing. Like, why not a week or something like that? But yeah, whatever. Next week we'll that's probably good. be talking a bit people. about crafting, uh, and we'll find some other hot topics. Hopefully, the Arena Net will come with some news, and we'll find some <laughs> interesting things to talk about. Um, but yeah, that's it for this uh, week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, please leave a comment behind uh, about your experience last beta, and you know what you thought of this video in general. And give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Pretty much just the, just about it. And yeah. follow us and on Twitter out, uh, and Facebook if you want. Check out our other Guild Wars 2 uh, videos. videos. There's have, uh, lots of coming. Videos. Yeah, lots of videos coming. So uh, we'll, we'll be saving them up, releasing them steadily over a couple of weeks so uh, we don't run out and you guys aren't going to get flooded with it. But uh, definitely go check it out. We'll have some links after this video. Yeah, definitely. And uh, till mm. next time, I guess, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> No, uh, I'm not even. No, I'm not even going to do it. God damn it! <laughs> no, I'm not. I no. already asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, uh, All right. All right. See you Thanks later, guys. guys.